Hi friends, I'm starting a new series on this channel. It's gonna be all about quick, actionable design tips. I plan to upload them every Wednesday and the videos are gonna be pretty short but very actionable, very tightly packed with information and they're gonna be about a minute or two minutes. But I'm a little rebel myself, so the first video is gonna be on Monday, today, and it's not gonna be two minutes long, it's gonna be a little bit longer than that. So I'm breaking my own rule even before it was properly established. That's just me. Okay, so why am I doing this? There is a lot of knowledge floating around Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and other platforms and the main problem with that knowledge is that 99% of it is just recycled and that is becoming a bigger and bigger issue now. So most of the accounts sharing those quick tips actually recreated some other tip that somebody else did before them. A lot of these people don't have any commercial experience, they also didn't really do like real projects in their careers and they're sharing those tips to boost their social media ratings, but often they don't know what they're doing. And yes, many Instagram accounts actually steal both our content and they try to steal our visual style because apparently people like it so much that they just want to borrow it. But all I can say that right now it's been mostly unsuccessful. Like, they did try to copy it, but it's kind of ugly anyway. But the problem is deeper than that, because if somebody just worked on some dribble portfolio shots for two years and now is teaching design, the problem is that they don't have any real experience with real products and they can reinforce some bad habits in you. They can teach you one thing, you know, to do this well, but at the same time, they can sneak in a couple of bad advices for you. You will think that because that advice, that initial advice that they gave you is good, then you will think that, okay, maybe everything they're doing is worth it and you will learn some things that are just wrong. Here's one example that I noticed on Instagram. And of course, we recreated that example ourselves because we don't really want to promote those people. They're just sharing bad knowledge. They are right partially here because obviously, if you're having labels on buttons, they need to state what's gonna happen after you click. So having an OK button or a Next button is generally a bad idea. So as a fix, as you know that little green check mark or like a green line above it, they show this example. Like let's replace the button text to remove and now we're completely fine. It just works perfect now, right? Well, not exactly. And okay, it is technically better, but it's not great. And it's not even good. By showing you how to do one thing, they broke another rule that's actually pretty important too. So here's what's wrong with it. If you have two action buttons side by side, you know, one on the left, the other on the right, they can't really look the same. They have to be visually different because one of them is the primary, the desired action, and the other one is the secondary action. By having them look the same, it's just gonna be confusing. It will just take a little bit longer for the user to process that information. It's just simply a little bit of more work, extra work for our brains to do. And our brains don't really like extra work. So we should really avoid stressing them out whenever we can. So a really good approach would be to show a difference in a big way. So to have the secondary button be really secondary. So be less visible, less prominent and less dominant on that screen. And then have the primary button be more visible. Simple, right? And yet a lot of these examples and tutorials just fail to show that. And we will get to whether you need a red action button for negative actions in one of the future videos. For now, let's just assume that one has to be more subtle and the other has to be more visible and more in your face because that's the primary action. And sadly, examples like this are everywhere around us. And I'm not saying that these people are evil. I'm just saying that they're trying to do good, but at the same time, they're teaching you things that aren't as good. So as always, if you try to follow someone's tips, check their experience first. Check how many projects and different companies they worked for, how many actual real products they've built. Because if they only done dribble shots for a living, it's not probably gonna be too wise to follow them as like UX or design gurus, because they might know how to make something look good but not necessarily how to make it work. So this is the main reason for this series. Over the last 22 years I've worked on over 500 different projects or different products and we've done extensive research including forms for government products and we're still doing that research. So everything that we share here is gonna be tested. That's basically it. It's just gonna be tested. It's not gonna be a recycled copy of some other tip found online. It's just gonna be coming from our own experience. And here's one more tip for today. Just one. But it's gonna be worth it, I promise. This is something that I've noticed a lot of junior designers do, and it's pretty easy to fix. So the problem is this, that the label 
is as close to the text field that it relates to as to the previous one. And it really shouldn't be like this. When your fields are condensed like that, especially in longer forms, it just takes a lot longer to process and to understand which field is the label actually for. So if you have a distance of X between the label and the text field, it's good to have double or triple that distance from the previous field. This is just rule of proximity in action. It just helps you to set the right structure. And also, I am sharing these tips as images on Twitter every single day. So if you haven't, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm gonna link my profile in the description of this video. And if you found this video interesting, leave a like, leave a comment what you think about it. And of course, share it further because we want more people to learn those good practices. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Cheers. Uh -huh.